Uh, hi, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. Uh, I work at uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland, and I am currently involved in uh, Tizen release engineering team. This, as you might imagine, uh, requires a lot of verification, validation, uh, and in order to stay efficient with uh, our daily tasks, we try to automate as much as possible uh, from uh, what we do daily. Today, I would like to share with you our most recent uh, design for uh, testing automation on the embedded devices, which is MaxPy board and accompanying software. Uh, let me start with a short introduction to what we will be talking, uh, what I will be talking to today. Uh, summarize real quick uh, previous efforts in this matter. Then I would like to describe uh, our concept uh, and uh, show you the solution. Uh, I will move on to the accompanying software uh, and present to you uh, our plans for the future. Uh, then I will sum it all up, and uh, we should still have some time for a Q&A session. So to begin with, what Tizen actually is. It's a GNU Linux uh, distribution aimed at embedded devices, which uses standard components, such as a collection of uh, GNU tools, Linux kernel, obviously, uh, Wayland server, uh, display server, and Enlightenment Foundation libraries, or EFL for short, as main graphics library. It runs on various embedded devices, such as mobile phones, wearables, uh, TVs, uh, or even fridges, known as family hubs. And since uh, May 2017, also, uh, IoT devices, uh, since the um, Tizen uh, 4.0 Milestone 1 uh, release. But before Tizen goes to product, uh, a platform has to be developed, and it uh, involves uh, engineers from all over the world, from R&D centers in USA, South Korea, uh, India, and Poland as well. And that's why we need to release often, to fail early, and to detect uh, any defects that uh, might come with the uh, uh, most recent patches. That's why we uh, publish snapshots daily, but by no means it should affect quality of the software that is being published. So release engineers um, uh, act upon it, and there is a QA step uh, prior publishing each uh, snapshot. Although uh, internal package tests uh, are really helpful, uh, it's not enough for us. Uh, since we have to uh, take care of uh, devices that are, uh, that are being used by various developers, we tend to um, check all the uh, snapshots before publishing them on actual hardware, so that we know that there will be no unexpected behavior or any damages made to uh, those devices. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, this requires a lot of devices, and not, of, not all of them uh, can be easily obtained, such as uh, uh, hardware that is not yet publicly available, or uh, fridges I mentioned earlier. That's why we wanted to have, uh, we wanted to be able to access them remotely. Uh, this way, uh, there, are, there is no possibility of some security leaks, uh, developers can focus on uh, software development and not on board maintenance, and uh, boards are not uh, stored aimlessly in lockers once developers uh, leave office, but they can be better utilized by uh, other developers from different uh, R&D institutes. That's why we came up with the MaxPy board, and uh, once it is connected to the device under tests, or DAT, we call it a dryad. And as you can see, uh, dryad requires only two connections to, the, to be able uh, to, to be accessed uh, from the outside world, which is power supply, of course, and network connection for communication. Uh, this dryad uh, is connected to the Raspberry Pi 3 board, 
and uh, all other connectors are only between the MaxPy and uh, Raspberry Pi uh, that uh, consists this dryad. Uh, since um, dryads require only two connections, it is pretty easy to scale it up and uh, um, it is as easy as connecting multiple dryads to the network switch and providing a power supply for them. It also unifies the, uh, uh, the access to all of these devices. Uh, it does not matter if it is Raspberry Pi, uh, Exynos-based Odroid, or uh, a mobile phone such as this uh, Note 4, I believe. And we will get back to the MaxPy board in a second. But first, let me uh, tell you um, which other efforts in this matter uh, have been made so far. Uh, starting with uh, software uh, approach, uh, most notable uh, software is, I believe, LAVA, which stands for Linear Automated Validation Architecture, and, is, uh, and it is a deployment system uh, for uh, embedded. It supports both virtual and physical devices uh, and uh, allows running wide range of uh, tests uh, from boot and bootloader to system level, although some additional hardware might be required for that. Uh, it is uh, used by um, various distributions like uh, automotive grade Linux, uh, but I believe uh, more, even more popular uh, user of uh, Lava is kernel CI with uh, three and a half million uh, successful boots and counting. Uh, for us, however, uh, Lava was not a uh, sufficient solution. We required uh, remote access, uh, I mentioned earlier, and remote access on a level that uh, it acts as if the board was already uh, on release engineer's desks, not uh, the one that uh, Lava supports via hacking session, which opens a tunnel to already booted up uh, device under test and, that, uh, and then uh, gives the access. Uh, as for the hardware approaches, uh, Linaro also came up with LMPs around uh, 2013. Um, LMPs were boards that uh, uh, helped with uh, checking hot plugging of various devices such as SATA, USB, HDMI, but also they gave better control over uh, DATS. Uh, however, uh, they, uh, were, their development was put on hold and lessons learned from uh, development of LMPs is uh, linked down below. Uh, slides are already um, online. Uh, we also gave a try at uh, uh, hardware uh, attempt at solving this problem and came up with uh, our SDMAX board. This SDMAX board requires connection to the test server. It is not an in independent board uh, and uh, allows uh, doing three things with uh, device under test. It cuts uh, power supply so that the dot can be uh, brought into known state. Uh, what I mean is to be completely shut off. Uh, it gives pass through to the uh, USB on the dot and of course it shares connection to the micro SD card between the test server and device under test. Uh, since it worked pretty well for us in 2016, uh, we decided to uh, make it open hardware and uh, all of the schematics uh, are available at Git repository. Uh, and it has already been uh, reused by Qt company, uh, by Ableton as well, uh, and also uh, forked by Resin.io, who came up uh, with the AutoHut board, which is SDMAX with a few indicators, such as uh, micro SD card activity or uh, power supply activity. But uh, the SDMAX boards um, also gave us a lot of headache. For example, the USB connection between the test server and SDMAX boards was not a reliable one, and every uh, three to six months, 
uh, we got these uh, protocol errors uh, you see here. And uh, so far, we've, we've not, uh, we did not detect the uh, root of the problem. So we uh, decided to take a step back, uh, get back to the drawing board, and came up with a new idea. Uh, with the experience uh, from SDMAX boards, we already knew what was working well, what was not, and decided to focus on uh, replaceable media only, since they are the components that wear off uh, most quickly. And still, you might want to have uh, the actual uh, media that you will run uh, the software on and not just a network boot or similar. Uh, for example, for uh, storage benchmarking or so. Uh, we also decided that there should be no single point of failure. And what I mean by that is uh, that a failure of a single subsystem, such as USB on a test host, should not uh, cause uh, failure on more than one device. And also, uh, we decided that there should be no USB involvement from the test server with the problems of the SDMAX. We also wanted to have uh, absolutely minimum of uh, external connections and decided to give uh, two of them. Uh, we wanted also unified access, uh, no matter what uh, device under test is actually connected. And with the feedback from Resin IO, uh, decided that the setup and maintenance of all the boards should be as easy as possible. Uh, so we thought that a user interface might, off, might also uh, be uh, beneficial uh, in such board. Uh, with uh, uh, interest in uh, power consumption measurements and uh, initiatives such as uh, Power CI, we decided that uh, power consumption measurement uh, hardware um, could also be beneficial uh, on board. And also, we wanted to be able to uh, write. Uh, some additional information to the device under tests, such as EDID uh, via HDMI connection uh, for um, supplying information on uh, what uh, hardware can be connected to the device under test. Uh, with all that in mind, we came up with the MaxPy board I mentioned earlier, but I believe it will be much easier to describe it on these uh, blocks. So, uh, as I mentioned, only two connections to the outside world. And we began with the good old uh, SDMAX. So, uh, the capability of demultiplexing uh, access uh, to the micro SD card between test server, which in our case is uh, this NanoPi board and uh, ability to switch off the uh, power to the uh, device under test. Uh, next, the UI, often requested uh, and uh, often came up with in the feedback we got uh, from the SDMAX development. Uh, also, power control and power, uh, power consumption measurement hardware is already on the MaxPy board. And to control it, uh, to control everything, we've got the uh, NanoPi Neo, which is ARM v7, which is pretty small ARM v7 single board computer, and a microcontroller on the uh, board itself for low level functions. As for the connections to the uh, device under test, we've got Ethernet, uh, various USBs. Uh, including 5-pin USB with the ID pin uh, and uh, USB OTG. If there is a need to have uh, um, control over the uh, UART, that's also available. Uh, for diapers, which stands for dynamic jumper, to be able to uh, simulate pushing buttons or uh, switching on off uh, various jumpers. Some of the boards we test on uh, require such actions in order to, um, to be put into the uh, flashing mode 
or to be booted up, such as Mino board. Uh, it requires pushing the uh, power button. We also have got the HDMI, but as I mentioned earlier, only PCC line is connected for writing the EDID information. And we also knew that not everything can be predicted uh, uh, a priori, so there is also connection for the add-on boards. With that, we've got the ability of uh, switching microSD cards between uh, device under test and test server, which in our case is this NanoPi board. We are able to put the uh, device under test into known state. Uh, we can press buttons uh, on it. Uh, uh, we are able to measure power consumption, write TDID information, and also provide various connections uh, to the device under test over the in Ethernet that is connected to the MaxPy board. And we also are able to interact with uh, farm maintainers, are um, able to interact with those devices. And since we are at interaction, uh, MaxPy boards are equipped not only with those uh, LEDs, activity LEDs I mentioned from the feedback from Resin IO, but also uh, a couple of buttons for uh, quick actions. Uh, some additional uh, LEDs for indicating state of the either MaxPy board itself or the device under test that is connected to it, um, and also OLED display for uh, quick information, uh, which um, has been pretty useful so far. As for the extensibility of the board, uh, we use uh, Prototypes, uh, prototype boards, uh, if there is a need uh, to extend uh, features on the MaxPy board even further, or if uh, there was something we did not think of uh, while creating uh, this board. With that, we've got finally a standalone um, device that does not need uh, access to the test server anymore which is aware of its state, uh, and, uh, and not only the its state, uh, but also device under test that it controls, which is pretty easy to maintain and, extensibility, uh, and extensible from the ground up. And if you would like to build your own, if it would be beneficial for you, you should uh, get equipped with NanoPy Neo, which uh, goes for around 10 bucks. Uh, parts for the MaxPy board uh, cost around $80, uh, and it was for, uh, I believe, 30 uh, units we um, uh, made around December, but also high soldering skills and a lot of patience. Uh, still, if you're interested, uh, go ahead to our Git repository where you can find uh, schematics, software, uh, schematics for the prototype boards, and um, even more. But uh, that's not the whole solution. Uh, hardware is not everything. Uh, we also had to uh, develop some software that accompanies this solution. Uh, and with uh, approaches such as uh, Lava, monolithic approaches, uh, we already knew that making changes uh, after time uh, can be uh, painful. So we decided to go with multi-tier architecture and focus on following the Unix philosophy of doing one thing, but doing hopefully well. Uh, so we've got four layers uh, in our software stack, and uh, those layers communicate with each other uh, via RESTful HTTP APIs. Uh, still, we wanted uh, our stack to be uh, similar and to be able to develop each of the components uh, by the same team. So everything is written uh, in Go language. And as for the software layers, uh, there are four uh, types of actions that uh, have to be done uh, as day-to-day uh, -day release engineering activities and it is uh, monitoring uh, build system for uh, new releases 
are actually pre-releases, pre uh, since they are uh, not publicly available yet, uh, or getting notification about them, depending on what uh, your uh, build system supports. Also, uh, being able to, um, to uh, schedule all the uh, actions, uh, having access to the uh, device under test, and actually running uh, those uh, actions. So the first one uh, is being taken care of Perun. Uh, Perun in Slavic Legends is a, a demigod with the uh, uh, biggest uh, powers. So uh, it uh, he was chosen uh, for the first layer. As for the actions that uh, are necessary uh, to be taken care of, uh, it's the job for Veles. Veles in Slavic Legends is a uh, uh, god of the underworld uh, and takes care of it. As for the uh, being able to know uh, where those actions can be done, it's a job for Boruta. Boruta in Slavic Legends is a caretaker of the forest and all living creatures. Uh, and uh, the knowledge as how to perform all those actions is a job for dryad. Uh, dryads uh, are the uh, free souls of the forest. And let's begin with those MaxPy-based dryads. Uh, dryads in our testing uh, farm uh, take, uh, take care of a single device under tests. Uh, under test and are fully aware of uh, all of uh, capabilities that given that provides. Uh, as I mentioned, they require only two interfaces, which are power supply and network connection, and are equipped with uh, software for flashing firmware over the air, uh, and also for cutting uh, power connection uh, or, or bringing it up again. But that's uh, just for a single device. If there are multiple ones, uh, they have to be taken care of. And as for the farm management system, we've got Boruta. Boruta schedules access requests uh, to the devices and provides convenient uh, access uh, to, to the um, assigned ones. So uh, how does uh, Dryad lifecycle goes in Boruta? Uh, first, uh, Dryad is in maintenance mode, and it can be brought into idle or unallocated uh, state by the farm maintainer. If there is an access request to, uh, to Dryad with uh, capabilities uh, which given Dryad serves uh, and it matches, uh, then it is uh, assigned the test environment is prepared, uh, SSH tunnel for the access to the NanoPi board is set up, and then all of the actions might be performed. So to sum it all up, uh, it does not matter um, who uh, requests uh, the access to the um, dryad, if there is one that uh, matches requirements, it will be assigned uh, to uh, requester. And it can be either uh, interactive session by real users or just an automated one by some automated uh, testing framework. And since we are talking about automated testing framework, let's move on to VLS, which is our uh, Lava-inspired uh, testing framework, which translates uh, YAML job definitions, like they are, uh, like the ones used in Lava, into the actions that are being executed on DATS. Actions can be divided into uh, several sections, such as deploy, boot, uh, test, and collect. We try to maintain uh, compatibility with the Lava uh, job definitions. Uh, but uh, there are uh, only a subset of actions that can be uh, run in Lava Laboratories is supported in VLS so far. Uh, as you might have suspected, uh, VLS' main purpose was to automate the step of uh, performing actions on the device uh, 
and that's what it comes down to. Uh, just parsing YAML, collecting all the necessary assets for job execution, then requesting access to the device under test in Boruta, and actually performing tests and collecting results. Multiple uh, VLS servers uh, can, be, uh, can use a single Boruta server, since Boruta only schedules access requests, but let's focus on just a single one. And no matter uh, who submits a YAML job for the test execution, whether uh, it's a user or automated system, it doesn't really matter for, for VLS. Uh, VLS takes it from there uh, and takes care of the uh, whole testing process. Moving on to the final layer of uh, our new testing system, Perun, uh, which is uh, the testing system for the OS images. It schedules uh, verification per uh, new pre-release and actually automates the uh, quality assurance steps of release engineering duties. It uh, crawls given URLs, uh, then reports uh, any changes. Uh, it detects, submits VLS jobs, collects uh, all the artifacts after the uh, testing jobs are completed, and interprets the results uh, so that we know whether uh, new pre-release can be accepted or should be stopped from being published. Uh, just like with uh, VLS, there can be multiple connections uh, from the Perun servers to VLS, uh, for example, to monitor various uh, build systems uh, which can um, publish uh, software to be tested on. Uh, all those uh, layers combined uh, make uh, the Slav stack, uh, which uh, we uh, named it. Um, and the name comes uh, from all of those uh, Slavic legends. We wanted to uh, keep it simple and decoupled. Uh, so if you only need a unified access uh, to be able to, to access remotely your devices under test in a unified way, um, go ahead, uh, take the schematics for the MaxPy board and you're all set. But maybe you already have your own solution for the uh, remote access to the DATS, but you still want a software that manages uh, a whole farm. Replace MaxPy with your solution, take Boruta, as long as the API's uh, contracts are fine, um, it should uh, work properly. Maybe you have already your own testing framework, but still could uh, use uh, board uh, farm management software. Uh, then go ahead and take uh, multiple parts, such as Boruta and Dryads. Or maybe you think that our Golang implementation uh, requires reworking, or you already have your JavaScript-based dashboard, uh, Python uh, testing framework, uh, and um, Jenkins, for example, for scheduling access to the boards. Uh, as long as the API contracts are maintained, uh, all these uh, layers can be easily swapped. So that's what we've been working so far. And as for the uh, future plans, on the uh, hardware um, side, uh, we uh, plan on having the uh, audio input and output, uh, on being able to test uh, audio I.O. And uh, we plan to investigate the possibility of extending MaxPy boards with uh, USB Type-C, since uh, more and more uh, targets are equipped uh, with that connector. Uh, also, uh, we see that there is uh, a need to be able to access uh, serial console on the NanoPi boards, and the future uh, revisions of MaxPi will be equipped with it. Uh, on the software side, we will provide uh, web interfaces for all current layers. Uh, so far, we only uh, used uh, CLI, and mm, it was enough. 
Uh, we also uh, intend to provide service state management uh, for uh, to be able to um, to work with uh, failure if uh, and if such occurs, and provide uh, further uh, layers, uh, maybe to automate release engineering duties uh, even more. Uh, all further details uh, can be found on wiki pages, uh, either for MaxPy boards or uh, lessons learned from our experience with SD Maxes. Uh, if you uh, would like to, uh, for us to help you with uh, creating your own MaxPies, uh, go ahead and drop us a line at mailing list at, or poke us at uh, Tizen channel on Freenode. Uh, to sum it all up, we uh, finally got a setup uh, which uh, can be uh, reused pretty quickly and is uh, easy to maintain. We finally got uh, all the responsibilities divided so developers uh, can focus on, uh, only on software development, uh, testers on writing tests, and uh, farm maintainers on uh, maintaining all those devices. We've got uh, parallel execution. No matter who wants uh, to access uh, the devices, either automated, test, uh, automated testing systems or uh, interactive uh, sessions for uh, real users. And we finally got the unified environment, no matter which, uh, mm, which type of device is connected. Uh, that's all I've got uh, for you prepared today. And if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. I will repeat those because I've got uh, only one mic. All right. Uh, the question was about uh, CLI interfaces on current layers and uh, the fact that I only linked the uh, MaxPy repository uh, is because uh, it's the only one that uh, is already publicly available. All other ones are still uh, in the process of, of being published. So uh, Veles uh, is uh, halfway through, uh, Peron is still in development, and uh, Boruta should be published uh, in a few weeks, I believe, uh, but uh, so far there is uh, no publicly available documentation. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thanks for your attention. And uh, if you would like to uh, see uh, all of those in action, uh, I have uh, mm, stand on technical showcase uh, tomorrow uh, evening uh, if you'd like to see uh, Dryads or uh, Veles, Perun, uh, uh, only Veles and Boruta. Uh, Perun, not yet, uh, but uh, we're, uh, it's coming. Uh, and uh, uh, tomorrow night, uh, evening, sorry, at technical showcase, uh, mm, I will be demonstrating the software and hardware as well, if you're interested. For now, thanks for your attention and have a good one. Thanks. <laughs>